Because I deal with traumatic adults all day long, because of the homes they come from, because of what I've seen in the past, and I've dealt with this for the last 18 years, even in my private practice, it's the same thing, it doesn't matter how much money you have, what house you live in, the things that were said. One of the most powerful things that a person can attain is to believe in themselves, is it has to start somewhere. And that's a, and that's a journey because you know, we talked about this at the beginning. If they didn't believe in you, then how can you believe in yourself? So the guys get them to understand, well, what if they don't come along? Are you going to create your life without them? Will that be okay? Are you, are you going to give yourself permission to move on and do different? To think different, to experience emotion different, to believe different, and to be different. Okay? And that's, what, and that's the whole thing. So, so to me, Believing in yourself, so if you believe in yourself, that means you have the power to move forward, take chances. Oh, here's another thing I tell them, and enjoy failure. Failure is great. The question is, what did you learn? Because you can't have one without the other, correct? You can't have one light without day. So you need it. Because what happens is, is if they told you that you were not good enough, you can fail, what's ringing in your ear? They were right. So I'm not, going to do, I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to sit still. I'm not going to move. I'm not going to do anything. I'm paralyzed. Hence, your belief is taken over. So to believe in yourself to me is a common denominator. Let's continue. Back there. There's a black back there. My name is Maria. Can I have a question? For I have a microphone. One sec. Everyone can hear you. You need it. Maria, I have a question for you. I hope you don't mind. It's kind of personal. I just want to know what was your inner dialogue to help your cognition stop the diagnosis that you had just gotten when you were home battling that to shift from I'm home ill to here I am developing, changing, and living again? It appears you're a lot brighter than me. So I'm going to, I'm going to because your question, my brain doesn't process. I'm sorry, I'm not I'm the brightest guy on the planet. I got to process stuff. I did not make the Dean's list. Right? I didn't make the deal, I didn't know where it was. <laughs> I thought you got in trouble if you made the deal list. I didn't want to get on it. Where I come from. So I would like to hear that question one more time because I want I really want to answer the question, okay? I'm, I'm focusing. I just want to know what your inner dialogue was. You just got this deadly diagnosis where the doctor said you might try to be beaten. Right. So we had some inner dialogue, obviously you've already shared about what that meant to you, and yet you were at home, and that was affecting your thought patterns and how you did things. So I'm just wondering what it was that you used or what you told yourself to shift from, I'm home possibly fighting for my life, to I'm home developing in this book, moving forward, creating a new life, and changing things for myself. That, that nine months at home, um, allowed me to rethink a lot of things. And I'm gonna be honest with you, because when they gave me the prognosis that you have a 95% of survival rate, I said, really? Okay, but I, but I took all this chemotherapy and stuff, and I struggled with like a raisin and all this stuff. And what it, what it made me do is just appreciate life. And it made me appreciate, you know, to, um, creating this book that actually could serve other people, okay? it. it, it I look at life differently. I don't think, you know, I don't know if everybody needs to go through this kind of thing and to see life like that, you know, but when you do, it, it, you just, things are different. The guy honks at me on the highway, but people pass me, the guy. As long as you don't stop me from where I'm going, you can go in front of me as fast as you like. But I'm gonna get there calmer, and less wear and turn on my brakes. Okay, so hopefully that answers the question. Just a question, as we um, be, what do they call us, uh, baby boomers, to help the millennium. Sometimes I notice that some of the kids really don't have self-confidence in themselves, and I know they're hearing from someone, you know, you can't do it, this is too hard, you know, because of your color you'll never be this or whatever. What words or advice can I give them to help break their beliefs, let them know that you can do better? Can we start? For a long time, I worked with um, and served young people, young Latinos, young Asian Americans, Filipinos that are 
at our community center uh, from the time of about 25 years. And uh, you know, as executive director, I can see them all the time. I would see them, and I would go in and get power from them. I went in the ground myself because you know my, my children said, "Dad, what do you do at CIPA?" I go, "Wow, I I I, I shake hands and I sign checks." But the best part of my day was to go in and to interact and to be with our young people. And as I realized that as I get energy and what I did and what I shared with them at that moment in time, whether it was five seconds or 10 seconds, albeit it was sincere, that that was a start. And that affirmation of every day, how you doing, you're good, you're great, I'm, I'm glad that you're here, keep doing good, is that we can, you know, talk about mindsets, but our actions are obviously what, what happens on a daily basis. And their actions create the reality and create sometimes their future as well. So for me, Bayon, it was about affirming them, just giving them love and energy at any point that they can, so whether they could deal with stuff that wasn't so good in their lives, or they would affirm and positive reinforce the things that they were doing, like being at a community center, creating community, being uh, there for younger brothers and sisters. Right? That's what I think the power of community is, and we all have to do it more with each other, with young people, millennials. I got Gen Xers, Gen Yers, you know? And, 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 it, and it's so important that we do it for everybody, I'm turning over to you. 